What is up, everybody? Welcome to another Rad Parenting. My name is Joe Sib. I'm Anaya Bogue. We probably don't need to say that because if you're here at Rad Parenting, you know who we are. I hope so. That's my radio voice taking over. Nice. Yeah, I just need to tell everyone who we are and what we're doing. It's like it's like hip-hop music. If you ever wonder who's singing, they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you three or four times <laughs> through the track. Our show today is about girls, young girls, and I'll throw out women mm-hmm. in general. Absolutely. Self-defense. Mm-hmm. The topic came up uh, when you and I were talking about Uber. Mm-hmm. Living here in Los Angeles, my daughter takes Uber with her friends. Right. I never have her go alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, they Uber to the mall. They Uber to the football game. They Uber to their friend's house. Three girls in the car Whose during the day. Whose credit card is that Uber connected to, Joe? You know whose it is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I tell you right now because I'll, people always say, what's it like having kids? And I say, you better have a driver's license because you drive a lot. That, yeah. that, especially once they get to the age that, you know, teenagers, yeah. you're driving them everywhere. And living here in Los Angeles, and for our listeners that aren't here in Los Angeles, you're just driving. And I know that I have a friend that lives in Ohio, and he moved away from California, so he wouldn't have to drive. I talked to him this weekend. He's got three kids in different, three different hockey teams. Oh. Yeah, you know, I was like, yeah. He's like, I'm Joe. Deal. He's like, Joe. I have a van. I drive kids. That's what I do. Yeah, I, I should. I should have a class three license or right. whatever it is for a bus. <laughs> so with my daughter here in Los Angeles, she does Uber. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you your thoughts on Uber. I know Uber's gotten some press recently. Mm-hmm. There's been some sexual assaults. Mm-hmm. There's been you know bad things going on. How do you feel about three teenage girls? getting into an Uber to go, say, you know, from one house to another during well, the day, Well, much, much better evening. than I feel about one teenage girl getting into that Uber by herself. Um, but I think that, you know, we have legitimate concerns for girls and women because of the rate of, of assault, sexual assault, physical assault against girls and women, you know, globally. Um, and the answer to that is we have to make sure that they're equipped. We're not making that problem go away anytime soon. So we have to make sure that our daughters are able to protect themselves. What age do you sit down with your girl Mm -hmm. and say, hey, honey, we need you to get some self-defense? Well, first of all, I think that, you know- Or at least learn how to protect yourself. Right. Okay. So I think that, you know, it it happens, the earlier the better in terms of her teaching her, you know, agency over her body and that if she always, she has the ability and she has the right to say no, to show no through physical actions and to believe most importantly that she's capable of doing that because frankly we teach girls from very early on thank you to fairy tales and disney movies that uh, they're damsels in distress they're not the ones that are supposed to be protecting themselves they're supposed to wait for somebody else to come and protect them or save the day which leads me into my next question i know some of the listeners hey what about boys they need to protect themselves absolutely to- today's show though i feel you just nailed it from the time boys are born they're the football player they're this they're that so i feel like that energy they know how to not they know how to protect themselves but maybe they've been pointed in the direction of being able to protect themselves we've given them permission we've given them permission um and, and and even in terms of just like the way we encourage boys to play some of which they're naturally inclined to just be a little more rough and tumble if you will but always just sort of that boys will be boys and like ugh, getting in there even as dads like i would guess that you probably played differently with your son than you did with your daughter if you were like out on the grass or something did you tend to be a little more like rough with him than you were with her not really interesting no not really that's they, awesome yeah no not really cuz they both would want to you know go crazy and run right. around and stuff. Right. So I didn't really have like, uh, I'm going to play one way with a my daughter. I'm going to play one way with right. you know, my son. A, a lot of parents do because we have this sort of like, oh, you know, our little girls are these precious, delicate little things that we can, not only can we be more rough with boys, but we want to be more rough with boys so that they're better, better equipped to deal with having to be rough out in the world. I would say they're too rough with me. That's what I yeah, would say. I- <laughs> <laughs> they're, you know, they're, yeah, they were way too rough with me. I will... Say though that I at a young age for my daughter got her into karate, mm, nice. and she and she went she accelerated like yeah. boom she advanced you know the yellow belt boom boom all the way up I, the purple belt brown belt I think before she kind of stopped being able to do it just because the school got in the way right. Um, but later on I found out that karate for her as a young woman 
might not be the best self-defense. Well, it just might not be enough. I mean, okay. certainly, you know, martial arts goes a long way in A, connecting girls to, with their bodies, right? Helping them understand how strong they can actually be and giving them, you know, certain moves that are going to be helpful, period. So what you've done is really, really, you know, a, a big step in the right direction. I prefer, and if, if it was going to be an either or situation, um, uh, programs like Impact Personal Safety, which is one that with my Real Girl program, we work with all the time. And the thing that makes Impact distinctly different is that they work with the padded man. So they have these extraordinary men that volunteer their, their time. They go through extensive training and they're put in these suits that basically protect their parts so that they can teach these girls how to really use kicks and punches and whatever it takes takes to defend themselves. And, and, um, you know, basically their approach is it's one thing to be in a, in a dojo where everything is sort of very structured and this is what's going to happen and he's going to do this and then you're going to do this move. Um, with impact, the, these girls are understanding the adrenaline rush that comes with somebody picking you up from behind or grabbing onto your hair and being given certain basic tools that you can use kind of a, you know, anything and everything approach, uh, and then getting out of there as quickly as you can and, and calling for help. And the name of these classes? Impact Personal Safety. Okay. Impact Personal Safety. Uh, is there a site they can go to? Uh, yes. So they have their own site, which I think is impactpersonalsafety.com or .org. They have uh, chapters all over the country. Um, they're, they're really well established in California and they've done some work in, in different parts of the world. But, you know, these women are dedicated to what they're doing and to ensuring that, you know, even, even the initial like learning, teaching girls, I have watched them teach girls who are like little baby birds. When you say, okay, I want you to say no from your gut. And they'll be like, no, like, I'm not kidding. As if somehow <laughs> they're not capable because they're girls of using their voice in a really strong, protective way. So the first step is even just teaching these girls how to be like, no, like you need to back off. Like I am, I will turn into a wild animal if you get any closer. And I can see how, you know, when we, our girls are as young as nine in my programs. So you start to witness how deep the programming runs that these girls think that part of being a girl is just in every way, even in terms of their voice to be this delicate little flower that has to wait for somebody else to come and protect her. It's absurd what we're setting our daughters up for. Yeah. And, and, and the question that comes to mind when you say the young girl with the little voice is a bird, yeah. how do you, if a girl doesn't have any interest in that, you know, how do you say to a eight year old girl, Hey, you know what? I, I think you should have some classes right. to protect yourself in the event of something bad without scaring them. Cause I'm always so afraid. Yeah. Of you know something there something ha bad hasn't right. happened yet, but then you start talking about it, yeah. scares a kid. How do you have that conversation? Well, you know, I think that there's all kinds of opportunities c to come in, sort of you know around the through the back door, if you will, or whatever. So whether it's you know you're watching something on TV. And, and you, you know, maybe, I mean, we're finally coming out with some really badass female superheroes that girls are going to st start to see is like, they'll be inclined to want to be that way. Um, or if they hear about something in the news, because it's really hard to protect ourselves or our kids from what's going on out in the world. You know what? Mommy and daddy really want to make sure that if anything were ever to happen, and it's probably not going to, but if anything was ever going to happen, that you'd be able to protect yourself. And the other big, the other big entry point is that girls know what mean girl and bullying behavior is. And the other thing that a self-defense class does, it's certainly one of the things that impact personal safety addresses, is that when you feel capable, you know that you could defend yourself if you had to, you carry yourself with a different confidence that says, I'm not the one you want to mess with. And so even in terms of like uh, deflecting bully potential, that is something that is going to resonate with girls. It doesn't have to be that I want to make sure that nobody's going to kidnap you and kill you. Yeah, that's an important, important thing that you said right there. Just being able to carry yourself out on the street where someone won't mess with you because yeah. they know that you may be that person yes. that has the skills to take them down. Yes. Fear is debilitating. Just having our daughters be out in the world fearful because they're aware of what happens to girls and women and they're, they're being legitimate concern, but having no idea how they would protect themselves. Again, the swimming analogy is perfect. We would not throw our kid into a, a, the deep end of a pool and cross our fingers that she was going to like make it out. We'd make sure that she knew how to swim, how to tread water, how to keep her head above, you know? So this is no different. With these topics, the thing that comes to mind, like I said, I always bring up, I don't want to scare my daughter and let her think the world is a bad place. Mm -hmm. I do know that the world's changed so much from when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So when they are 
you know, out at a party with their friends or they're Ubering. Yeah. How, is there anything, how do you get them to realize that in their surroundings, they need to be aware of the bad guys that are out there or bad women, just bad people yeah, in general. People. How do you do that? Well, I think that you balance it by saying, and and I think I think we've talked about this before, like this whole idea of, you know, the if many of them are on Facebook. However you want to do it, bring in stories that are going on in the world that are both really amazing stories about how extraordinarily good we can be as human beings. And then also saying, and here's the other side. And so just in case this happens, right? Just like, you know, getting on a plane, a plane could crash. It's probably not going to, but we need to know how to get, get off this puppy if, if something happens, right? It's just, it's no different. And I think it has to be approached in the same way. Now with these classes that girls can take, uh, impact personal safety, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're basically everywhere. And are they taught by men? Are they taught by women? They're taught primarily by women, but the padded person is always a man. Um, and they do, I mean, they are, some of these classes are for mixed, like for, they'll, they'll bring boys in, they'll bring men in, but is, they are predominantly, uh, populated by girls and women or enrolled in by girls and women. Okay. So the, basically the, the teachings, women have come up with situations that young girls could be faced with. Absolutely. Yes. And, and they, and they've given examples, um, you know, just, I mean, there, there, unfortunately there are plenty of examples of things that happen, including girls that have gotten themselves into really dire and sometimes ultimately fatal situations by, by wanting to not not be mean, wanting to be nice, because we're always telling girls even in even in a sketchy situation, wanting to be nice. What do you mean? I'm talking about strange men showing up at the front door of somebody's house, and the the the, the little girl opens the door. And little girl, I'm not saying little girl like five. I'm talking about even a 12 year old, a 14 year old girl, and he says, you know, um, you know, I'm here to you know do whatever, and he gets in the house or he talks her into coming with him, and she doesn't want to be unkind. She wants to be nice. She wants to be a pleaser. And she ends up just making it really easy. Instead of having appropriate a appropriate instinct around, you know, there are some men out there that are, that are predators and are going to do me harm. And I have to know how to handle that. I have to know that I'm never letting anybody in the house. I'm not even opening the door if my parents aren't home. I'm certainly not getting into a car with somebody. The word you just said, pleaser. Mm. I haven't ever heard that. I've heard I'm going to be polite. Right. No. Nope. What do you mean? Oh, we girls do. being pleasers. Is that what, what, explain that. Sure. So, I, I mean, there's an entire chapter of my book dedicated to this because it is so prevalent among girls. So this whole, like, you know, girls are sugar and spice and everything nice. We teach our daughters that they t should put their own needs and sometimes even their own safety, as it sometimes turns out, secondary to making sure that everybody around them is happy and that they're going with the flow. In in their teenage years, that often means peer pressure and succumbing to peer pressure because I'm, I don't want anybody to not like me. I don't want somebody to not uh, to be uncomfortable or mad at me. I want to avoid conflict. All of those things, instead of teaching girls, look, pleasing is not going to ultimately benefit anybody. You need to be really clear about what you want and need for your safety safety, for your well-being, et cetera. And you need to know that you can communicate that and not constantly be, you know, deferring to what somebody else needs. Can that go sometimes for boys as well? Absolutely. Yes. There's also, you know, boys and men who are people pleasers. It just seems to be almost a plague among girls and women. Um, and, and, and it also comes from, you know, we don't teach girls that they are autonomous human beings with their own value. We teach girls and women in a variety of ways. And we could do a whole show on this that says that our value, our identity, our relevance in the world is always connected to boys and men in our lives. We don't tell boys and men the same thing. And, and so we're, it, this so sort of true. connects back That's to so our topic true. because, it, again, if we are sending our daughter out in the world saying, always be nice, you know, no. If some man comes up to you and says, you need to come in the car with me right now, you need to do whatever it takes to get away from him. That is why I love doing this show because right there, I'm hoping that if you're listening, you, you go, you know what? I'm breaking the stereotype right now. Yes. I'm going to tell my daughter that she doesn't have to be nice to everyone. Right. If she is scared and she is fearful, then I'm going to tell her, let the people around you know. Yeah. Get out of that situation. And what you're saying is so true uh, where I've seen with with girls. even And like I said, that's why I brought up boys. I see sometimes uh, a situation that a young child could get out of, but they might not because they don't want to be disrespectful to yeah. the adult. Yeah, I have always told my kids, you know, I don't care who it is. If it's not if it's not your mom or dad, even a close friend, yeah. and you feel uncomfortable, you tell that person right to their face. You know, get out of here. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. And it, it also, even in terms of like, I mean, the rates of like, you know, child abuse and child molestation, it's like if we told kids, if something doesn't feel right in your body, I tell girls every chance I get. As female mammals, we have razor sharp instincts that we have because if we didn't, our species would be at an end very quickly. Our ability to protect ourselves as females and our and our future babies is critical to the continuation of our species. Always listen to your instincts. Always, always, always. Is that go with your gut? It's go with your gut, um, yes, but I think it's a little bit, you know, teaching girls in that context seems to really resonate with them because they understand if, you know, again, impact personal safety, they'll say, what does, what does a dog do if you come close to it and, and it feels threatened? Growls. Exactly. You need to growl when somebody is coming too close, touching you in a way that doesn't feel satisfactory, speaking to you in a way that doesn't feel respectful. You need to know you can growl. I think the theme of the show is we need to make our kids growlers. Yes. Right there. <laughs> Love it. Go with that instinct though. That is so true. Yeah. We're, we're born with that instinct to know when to protect ourselves when something's not right. Got to teach our kids that when they're not feeling those situations that are safe, yeah. people around them aren't safe. There's nothing wrong with growling or you know saying, hey, I'm out of here. Yeah. In fact, it could save their lives. And at the very least, it'll keep them safe. To do otherwise is doing our children a disservice and keeping them, potentially putting them in harm's way. Once again, it feels like it's just all about education. I know so many of our shows uh, go back to that of teaching your kids in an early age. Another thing that you brought up is the conversations. That's one of my biggest problems is finding that opportunity to get in on a topic, whether it's you know all the topics we've had on this show. Yeah. Today would be uh, defending yourself finding that opportunity with my daughter to have that conversation with her. And what you're saying is those opportunities present themselves all the time. We just got to have our radar on as parents yeah. to slide into that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I would say to, to parents, like create a, like create a bucket list of things that you're going to make sure that you teach your, you I teach your kids that. and just start knocking them off and make a plan, figure out how you're going to do it well, when you're going to do it. And then so you're Go just saying it. have a list in front of you like, all right, I'm going to talk about sex. Yep. I'm going to talk about drugs. I'm yep. going to talk about self-defense. Yep. I'm going to talk about relationships. I'm going to have, oh, wow, I love that yep. idea. In fact, I would say that as parents, it's our obligation to do so. Because the bucket list that you really do make, I'm going to go to Spain and learn how to speak Spanish. Like that's right. never going to happen. So that's, that, you know, you never, <laughs> my wife and I are going to go to Europe for three weeks. That part ain't going to happen. Right now you are a parent. You are in it. Yeah. So make the bucket list. Of what you love to teach your kids yeah. that maybe you didn't have the opportunity to learn. Absolutely. Love that. And then tune into Rad Parenting and we'll walk you <laughs> through how to do it. All right. One more time. Uh, we're going to talk about impact, personal safety. Definitely check out those folks. Uh, Anaya, you said they're lo they start in Los Angeles, but they're all over the place now. Yeah. Yeah. So go to impactpersonalsafety.com. Yeah, it's either .com or dot .org. We'll, we can have that information on the website as well. Got it. Uh, and also look for those conversations as fire starters to how you can have the bigger conversation with your son or daughter. We're always talking about that on the show and that is so true. And it is hard to find those opportunities, but as I always say, dropping into a parent, it's just having that radar on for, oh wow, I can have a conversation here. And you gotta be sneaky. I realized that with my kids because they, they, <laughs> my daughter knows right away, dad, are we talking about drugs again? I'm like, oh God, yeah. Just because a Zeppelin song came on and I'll be like, one time I got really high and listened to this song. And, dad, I know what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Rad Parenting. How many times can we say Rad Parenting? I think we've said it way too many times today. Uh, at the end of that show, we did not have the correct web address for where Anea wants you to check out for all of the impact safety. Uh, can you give that address now? Yeah, so here it is. You're going to go to impactpersonalsafety.com. And um, also two phenomenal books, Safety Godmothers, which has 26 uh, boys and girls telling these amazing stories about their experience with impact personal safety, and also Beauty Bites Beast, another great book for parents to read who want to know about you know arming their kids with great tools for self-defense. So we got two books and the address again. Impactpersonalsafety.com. That's it for Rad Parenting. See you next time.